हेलो ऑडिबल ओके फाइन so vpc architecture we have done correct okay so did we cover the the theoretical part and all what is vpc what is mean by subnet is that i have covered yes yes okay we have covered okay fine right guys can you tell me what is vpc what is mean by vpc what do you mean by vpc vpc is the virtual private cloud what is it this is vpn into client uh, client system and okay. multiple system with uh, multiple location okay okay what else others what is mean by vpc what is the purpose of vpc let's make it interactive what is vpc no one will answer okay no problem listen so i am telling like vpc is the logical isolation of your aws cloud suppose if you want to create any private cloud inside your public cloud when i say public cloud it is an aws then of course you know we need to go for vpc virtual private cloud and the one more thing you have to remember with respect to vpc vpc it is a regional service vpc it is a regional service within a aws account within a region whatever number of vpc that you want you can able to create it you can create a mini vpc over there and that day also covered what is meant by ip address what is cider that and all we have covered today guys again remember inside the vpc you guys can able to divide guys you can divide your vpc into multiple subnet sub network it is nothing but your subnet right because when you create a vpc we will have some cider right we will have some ip address range along with the network id and host id we will get the ip address so we have many ip address suppose if i take 10.0.0.0 forward slash 32 around 65536 ip address you will get it but in that you know you need to allocate few ip address for one subnet and another IP, another subnet because the resources that you are creating everything is not under the public right you may consider like some resources that i need to launch inside the public server when is a public server inside the public subnet and some resources that i need to launch inside the private subnet those resources that you are launching inside the public subnet which is called public server and the resources that you are launching inside the private subnet which is nothing but private servers or private services so it means that a public server it it is not getting the internet uh, or it is getting the internet uh, through public right the public internet you will get it there is a direct interaction on your net, internet but if you go with the private subnet whatever the services or resources that you are using it lies here so here we don't have a direct you know interaction with the internet maybe indirect interaction with your internet maybe i can call on this right so remember there are two subnet you guys can create it we can create it one is so there are two subnet one is a public subnet and another one is 
another one is a private subnet so there are two subnet you can create it one is public subnet and another one is private subnet so when i say public subnet where you can launch the public resources right the public resources where we have direct maybe a internet or a direct net network being connected but if we go with the private subnet where you can launch your private resources here it is not a direct you know internet maybe i can say and there is a indirect uh, communication indirect communication happen on the private subnet so then only you will go for the private subnet so this is you should remember guys it right. what else and your subnet will be launched will be launched in an availability zone in an availability zone where you have to launch your subnet subnet should be launched in an availability zone you are launching your vpc inside the region vpc is a regional service in the same way subnet you have to launch inside the availability zone every vpc for a vpc you guys can able to create a multiple subnets you can create the multiple subnet but where it should be launched it should be launched inside the availability zone so if you ask me what vpc has what vpc has vpc has vpc has the range of ip addresses right yes or no we have a range of ip addresses you can find it for a vpc right so maybe i can call it as cider right classless inter domain routing cider is nothing but a block of ip address there i can say block of ip address a range of ip address but if you go with the subnet each subnet you have to provide some ip address right suppose if you have a 20 ip addresses for your vpc suppose you have a two subnet for that particular vpc maybe you can distribute 10 sub 10 vpc sorry 10 uh, ip address for one subnet another 10 for another subnet like that so subnet also will get the partial partial number of subnets right partial number of subnets or partial number of ip addresses from the vpc from vpc you have to remember so subnet is the providing a private or isolation of your resources whenever if you take some app application consider like i have an application call i have an application call say database we have an application call database and we have one more application call uh, ec2 engada rendu machine irukku one one database in one ec2 can you tell me which one you will launch in public subnet and when which one we will launch in private subnet what do you think database private ec2 public exactly because database there is no you know direct interaction that you are going to do customer never ever you know they will do the direct interaction with your database always they will direct have the direct interaction with your server only so then it should be it should be public again guys this is not at all applicable for every situation i cannot tell right in all situation you should ec2 should be public and data should be private not like that i cannot tell like this one because i will give you one more example the next topic that i am going to cover uh, which is database after that i will cover one more topic which is called load balancer elastic load balancer in aws itself we have one service called elastic elastic load balancer So, if you ask me, what is the purpose of elastic load balancer? It is due. It is just to balance the load. It is just to balance the load. Suppose, if you are getting a request, right? Multiple requests. Suppose thousands of requests you are getting. Now, if I want to split that request into the multiple server, then we need this particular service from AWS in order to split your load. If you are getting the more traffic, I need to split your traffic. Then, of course, you know, in AWS we have one of the service which is called elastic load balancer why i am saying this one later when i cover load balancer 
obviously you know we will not launch your instance directly we will not call your instance with help of a public ip address what basically we will do we will call the load balancer the load balancer will allocate some server so the user they sh shouldn't directly launch the ec2 they will not uh, they will not deploy any application on ec2 what basically ec2 user will do user will call the load balancer ip address call call the load balancer ip address this load balancer will allocate some server maybe if load balancer is connected with 10 server then what architecture will look like load balancer you have to make it as a public and ec2 server you have to make it as a private it has changed right now earlier i said ec2 is public but now i'm saying ec2 is private only the load balancer url is public i'm saying it it is changing right yes we cannot guarantee like based on our requirement when if you want to have the direct interaction with your resources then you can host it in public subnet if you don't want it should have the direct interaction with the internet then you can host it in private subnet are you clear so far yes sir yes can you confirm yes sir okay as i said subnet will be launched inside the availability zone so availability zone can have one or more subnet gates remember availability zone can have one or more subnet it is your need you guys can select did you remember i said so inside your vpc we can create until 200 right i said for a region 200 subnets we can able to create in the same way i'm saying for each and every availability zone if i want to create one or more subnet yes we can able to create it that is possible in default in every availability zone inside your aws cloud you will get one subnet but if you want to add number of subnet yeah you can able to add it so this is also you have to remember so subnet that you are creating inside the availability zone for availability zone we can able to create one or more subnets and remember it is the one of the best practice always you have to keep it in your mind whenever if you go with the subnet so the best practice is you should always you should reserve you should reserve more number of or more ip addresses more ip addresses to be or to private subnet to private subnet this is the best practice you should remember so whenever if you go with the subnet where you are creating an ip address right you should reserve more ip address right in private subnet why because security for security reason only because why we are going for your vpc or just to create a private cloud right just to create the private cloud so when i say private cloud of course it's a security right talks about security then where you should reserve your ip addresses obviously right you have to make it as a private ip address if you want to make an ip address private then where you need to launch of course you have to launch in a private subnet then only the ip address will be in a private part so that way we can able to secure our ip addresses so there are three point remember inside the availability zone you have to create the subnet for a subnet we can able to create one or more sub for a availability zone we can create one or more subnets and you should reserve more ip addresses to your private subnet for security reason i have a question guys earlier i was asking you one question in the saturday session i asked one question what is that like can can vpc span across span across across availability zone can you tell me whether it is or no can vpc span across availability zone yes or no Can you tell me can VPC span across availability zone? Yes or no? Yes, I'm 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 expecting your answer.
Yes or no? Yes. 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 See, what I'm asking, please don't move. Yeah, what is my question like? This VPC, can I use in region level, right? Then obviously we can span it, right? We can distribute it, right? Across the multiple zone. Yes, of course. How? Through the subnet only. How we are distributing our VPC into the multiple LOD zone with the help of subnet? Am I correct or not? Yes or no? Yes. Suppose if I ask, right, can subnet span across availability zone? What is your answer? What is your answer? Yes. Yes. Can we able to use one subnet inside one LOD zone into another LOD zone? Yes, yes. Sure. Can I be able to use one subnet inside one RFD zone into the another RFD zone? No, sir. Answer is no. Remember, we cannot distribute, we cannot attach a subnet inside the RFD zone into the another RFD zone. We can be able to distribute our VPC into multiple RFD zone by using subnet. But single subnet that you have created inside the availability zone, that is only for that particular availability zone. It is not for another availability zone. This is the inter equation. Okay, we have to create another subnet for yes. another availability exactly. zone. Exactly. We have to create a separate subnet in another okay. zone. We cannot use the same subnet in another availability zone. Right. And the one more point you have to remember, the best practice you have to remember, IP addresses, not best practice, it's a, it's a rule actually. The IP addresses, like maybe a CIDR block, what I mean like CIDR block, of your public and the private, private shouldn't, shouldn't overlap with each other. Shouldn't overlap with each other. What is the meaning of this particular line? What is the meaning of this line? IP address should be different. Yes. For public and private, the IP address is a different. Public and private, the IP address should be different. Suppose I have created 10 EC2 machine. And you have, if you are creating 5 public IP address and 5 private IP address, then the IP address which is created for a public rate that you shouldn't you know overlap with each this one. Suppose if we here we have one IP address 0 0.1, that IP address only one IP address because IP address it is unique one. But here we are using the public and private. You shouldn't use you know public IP address into the private. Thereby, you know, there be there will be a lot of confusion. So this is also you have to remember. So IP address of public and private shouldn't overlap with each other. So fine. Now let me teach you practically how to create a VPC in your AWS management console. Sorry guys, listen. Suppose I'm creating a VPC. Click on this VPC. Yeah. 
Now, can you see a crate VPC here? Can you see crate VPC here? Yes, finish. Yes. So after that, here you can see the two options, right? One is VPC only and VPC and more. VPC only and VPC and more. So either of them you can select. But as of now, let me go with the VPC only. Click on VPC only. I will tell you later. What is the difference between this VPC only and VPC and more? And here you can give the name. So any name you can give it. Say my iPhone VPC name I'm going to use. My VPC iPhone 01. If you want to any name, you can give it. It's a kind of a tag name. Simple. And IP version, CIDR manual input. IP version, CIDR manual input. And IPAM allocated IP version for CIDR block. Right? So let me go with this one. Later I will tell you what is this one. So I will go with this one. So manual input I am going to give. Here, you know, you guys can select a CIDR. And if you ask me what is the default CIDR, you can select it. So you can start from 10.0.0.0 slash 28 to 10.0.0.0 slash, I think, which is 16, I think so. 16, uh, correct? Yeah, 16. So, right? So let me give 10.0.0.0 slash, which is 24, I'm going to give. When I say 24, how many IP address I will get? I will get around 65,000. 536 IP address I will give you. 10 point 0 point 0 point 0 slash 24 I will get. I think I hope you remember that one. Anyway, I will open the IP address guide.com and here I can select this CIDR to IP version 4 and which is 10 point 0 point 0 point 0 which is slash 24. When you click on convert, I can see around, okay, only 256. I'm sorry. If I select 16 only, I think 65,536. I made the mistake. Sorry. Did you remember that formula? Always remember that formula. 2 power base 32 minus whatever the cider post ID. Whatever the cider, the prefix that you have to give, which is also called as net mask. Correct. Now, after giving this cider, maybe let me give 16 here. Then come below. And I need a CIDR IP version 6 is available, right? As of now, just mark it as no. Mark it as no. <laughs> because I am going to only focus on IP version 4, not IP version 6. Which is, IP version 4 is 32 bit. IP version 6 is 128 bit. Point. Now let me come to this part. Tenancy. What is tenancy? Tenancy is nothing but, did you remember guys, pricing option of EC2? There are four pricing options I have covered. One is on demand, reserved, spot and dedicated host. In the same way, in tenancy we have two options. One is called default and dedicated. If you need a dedicated server, if you need a complete one, uh, the private server, then you have to select the dedicated. Or otherwise, if you want to go for default, a normal one, you can go for. But if you select the dedicated server, you have to pay a lot of money. Again, you, it will give you the more performance. It will give you more security because it's a dedicated server. It is a separate server. Isolated server. Isolated physical server, you will get it. Again, choice is yours. So let me go with the default because I'm not going to pay anything. But in real time, maybe most of the time, when you go with some finance application and all, the people, they will go for dedicated also. Okay. Default. And if you want any tag name, you can give, give it. Otherwise, I can click on create VPC. That's it. You can see the VPC, right? So VPC, this is an VPC ID and state is available. And this one I will tell you. Apart from this, which one? Yeah, we have selected the CIDR called 10.0.0 slash 36. 16, sorry, 16. We have selected. Fine. Now, if you click on this CIDR, this is CIDR already we have created. Only the VPC that we have created, guys. We haven't created any subnet. Only, only VPC we have created. Suppose if you want to create another VPC also, you can create it. In a region, you can create many VPC. Say, suppose if I want to create another VPC, let me write my VPC iPhone 02 and IP version manual input I am going to give 10.0.0.0 say slash uh, 28 I am selecting or slash 24 I am selecting. Whatever it might be. I can select it. 
and I will not go with the IP version 6 and default I'm selecting, that's it. Click on create VPC. Now one more VPC got created. So if you click on this your VPC, I can create two VPC, right? This is a default VPC. In every region, you can see the default VPC. In every region, you can see the default VPC. But here I have created a VPC inside. Customize the VPC that I have created. Two VPC I have created. Now, after creating the VPC, what is the next step? You have to create the subnet. Create the subnet also. How can I create the subnet? Click on create subnet. And here you have to give the VPC that I want to link. Say I am linking this one. I am linking this one. My VPC iPhone 01. Now, and this is associator, cider. And I will give a subnet name also. Subnet iPhone 01. Right? And then come below. And you have to select the availability zone. I have selected, this is Canada, I think so. Canada, a region I have selected. Inside, we have a many availability zone. Maybe I will select 1A. Inside this 1A only, I am going to create this subnet, right? That's it. Here you have to give the CIDR block for your subnet, not for VPC. You already given a CIDR block for your VPC, which is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Now you have to give a CIDR block for your subnet because in a VPC, we can create many subnets. So to understand this one, let me go to another free website, which is site 24 cross 7, where we have a tool called subnet calculator. Subnet calculator. Open that. So here you can give it. Say suppose I am selecting 16. Uh, I will divide this VPC into two subnet. Can I divide this VPC into two subnet? Yes, I can divide. As much that you want, you can divide it. Correct? So now let me copy this. And here, Go here and paste it here. And what is the range I have to give? The subnet calculator says, I think 17, maybe you can mark it as 18, slash 18. So if you want to know how many IP addresses you will get it here, just paste it this one, calculate. Totally, I will get 16,384 IP addresses you will get. Right, 16,384, one minute. So 16,384. 16,384 into 2, which is around 32,768. But what is the subnet number? One minute which is lesser than 16, lesser than 16. How many? 65,000. And which number then we have to keep? Which is 20, let's see. What is the number that we are getting? The number that we are getting 4096. So, what about 7? I'm getting around 32,768. So, yes. I think 17 we have to keep. I made the mistake. So let me mark it as 17. Sorry. So that's it. You guys can create the subnet. And here one subnet got created. In which RVD zone we have created? We have created in CA Central iPhone 1A. In iPhone 1A we have created one subnet. And can I create another subnet also? Yeah, I can create the subnet. So this is my VPC iPhone 01. And here we need to give the range also copy this and here you can select the IOVD zone if you want one year you can go with or one b whatever the subnet or IOVD zone 
where you need to create related no issues so let me go with another all of this one this time and paste this one which is slash 17 i think that's it click, click on create some so many subnet we have created totally we have created two subnets i didn't give any name i made the mistake here i can give the name this one my iphone subnet iphone 02 now the question is we have created two subnet right whether this two subnet are public subnet or private subnet that's the question whether it's a public subnet or private subnet so this is a private subnet guys remember Whenever in VPC, whenever you create any subnet, right, that is a private subnet. That's a private subnet. In default, it's a private subnet. It is not a public subnet. Unless or until you make changes on the public subnet, it's a private subnet. Right? So now the question is how to mark that as a, a public subnet. So it's straightforward. So what you need to do Uh, click on this, click on this particular subnet. Suppose if I want to make, this is my private subnet and I'm going to make this is a public sub subnet. How can I do that one? Simple, click on this. And in the actions, you have, you have one option called edit subnet settings. Edit subnet settings. So in that, you have to enable your auto assign public IP version 4 address. Can you see this option, right? So enable the auto assign IP settings to automatically request public IP version 4. Right? So if you want to make a public IP version 4, you have to enable this one. Unless or until if you are not enabling this one, it is a private subnet. It will be considered as a private subnet. But what I need, I need to make this is a public subnet. So when you click on the checkbox, after that click on save. Now, it is my, maybe I can rename for our understanding. It is my private and this is my public. This is for private and this is public. So first one is public subnet and another one is private subnet. So in order to make this one, go to the actions, click on edit subnet settings here you have to enable this one remember don't forget and there are two subnet i have created one is public subnet and another is private subnet any question so far can you confirm no finish okay so far what i have done i have created one vpc uh, better i will delete this vpc because anyway we are not going to use this one so i will delete this vpc and write delete Delete this VPC. Only one VPC we have. This is my VPC and I have created two subnet. It is already attached with my VPC also. One is public subnet and another one is private subnet. Done. So the public subnet that I have launched inside a zone called 1A and another zone 1B. Fine. Leave it. Now listen carefully. Now this is 1B, right? But I will tell you, now suppose, let me take one EC2 instance. I will take one EC2 instance and I will click on launch instance and say suppose this is my EC2 uh, without or EC2 default VPC like that I can give default VPC and this is my AMI and T2 micro uh, I can go with the without a keeper and network settings here there is a default VPC it is not our VPC it is a default VPC. So in order to confirm this one, let me create a new tab and I will show you, right? So let's show this. And I will go with the VPC, click on this and your VPC and where I can paste it. See, this is my default VPC. It is not my VPC, it is a default VPC. So if you want to see this one, here you can see it. See, here the default VPC, yes. Default VPC. Yes. 
fine now what i will do now using the default vpc i am going to launch the instance i am going to launch the instance and click on view all instances it is my default ec2 instance which is created by default vpc let's wait for some time okay when you click on this i can see the right public ip address and private ip address both ip address you can able to see and networking it got selected with the default settings it's a vpc which is a default vpc and it has a detail like a public ip address and private ip address now what i will do i will create one more instance guys i will launch one more instance this time i will launch the vpc so suppose i have a ec2 iphone i will create my vpc i will launch with my vpc whatever the ipc that i have created and linux t2 micro and i will go with proceed with tote keeper and go with the network settings now you can click on network settings it is a default vpc now click on this here we have my vpc is that right i have a vpc click on this i have a vpc you have to click on this then once you done once you done here we have a subnets we have a public subnet and we have a private subnet so inside the vpc we can create two subnet right public subnet or private subnet because we have created two subnet either of them is possible so let me go with the private subnet go with the private subnet and when i select the private subnet here we have auto assign public ip address even though you know we have selected the private subnet right it is giving like this so let me disable this let me disable this then after that i will directly go ahead and click on launch instance now come below and click on view all instances this is the vpc that i have created this time it is not going with the default vpc this is my vpc which is called a private subnet i have selected now let's see once it is up and running right so now click on this can you see only the private ip address for this one you don't see any public ip address right so because whenever if you launch any instances on the private subnet that will get only a private ip address it is not getting any public ip address are you getting my point yes dinesh yes sir everyone yes yes so let's launch one more instance also suppose i'm giving ec2 another vpc or another subnet so i will proceed without a keeper and click on network settings here i am selecting my vpc and i will select the public subnet this time public subnet and then click on launch instance and come below click on view all instances so let's wait for some time now we uh, we will get a public ip address yes let's see. okay so click on this here you are not getting any public ip address can you tell me why 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 we are not getting the public ip address here So we see, have to change any security in the networking side in networking so we are one minute i'm getting lot of disturbances
So let's see. Terminate this, and I will create a new instance. So this is EC2. Another or public subnet. Public subnet. And then Linux machine T2 micro. And I will proceed without a key pair. And after clicking on this, click on edit. And you can select the VPC which is you have created. And the subnet is public subnet. And here I have given auto assign public IP address visible. So let me enable this IP address. And after enabling, and let me try to create a launch instance. So now click on view all instances and then and then here we have a public submit. So now click on this. Let's see once it is up and running. Let's check. Okay. So public summit. So you can see the public IP address and private IP address. Everyone clear? Yes, Danish. So this is how you can create your VPC. After that, you have to divide the VPC into multiple subnet. But this time, I am going to tell you one more simpler way. No need to create a VPC for that you have to follow certain steps and then you have to go for your uh, what your subnet and then you have to follow certain steps in a single screen i want to create everything so is that possible if you ask me yes it is possible in a single screen we can create it for that reason only aws people they have enabled uh, this particular option which is called vpc and more you guys can see this one vpc and more it is very straightforward no need to go for this VPC only, go for VPC and more. And give any name. Guys, when you give any name, right, you can check here also what is happening. It is a wizard. It is a wizard. See, suppose I'm giving, uh, it is my uh, VPC, my VPC hyphen uh, wizard, using wizard. Can you see here? It is getting changed, right? This is my VPC. And yes. inside VPC, you can create many subnets. So it is giving some demo. Fine. Now, after that, I can select the CIDR also. Maybe we'll go with same CIDR. 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Here, it clearly, you can see 65,536 IP address. You will get it. And IP version 6, I can go with no. And tenancy, let me make it as default or dedicated, whatever it might be. And in this particular screen itself, we can select the number of IOD zone also. I think in central, how many IOD zones are available? In central, So to understand this one, click on your VPC and click on submit. And I have around five IOD zones. This two IOD zones I have created, right? Sorry, three IOD zones are available. In central, we have three availability zones. So now let me select uh, two or one, whatever it might be. So I can select one IOD zone. And I'm going to create two subnet. One is public subnet and one private subnet. Or if you want to create a zero public subnet and one private subnet is possible. Or zero public subnet, two private subnets also are possible. So whatever you want, you can create it. Let me create one public subnet and one private subnet. And not get beyond all, no need to worry. That's it. That's it. Click on create VPC. So automatically it will create your VPC. And it will create the subnet and it will create the routing table and it will create the uh, everything in S3 endpoint, everything will, it will be created in a single screen. So it's more powerful. So instead of, you know, without a wizard, you can go for wizard also. So here also you can create the single screen, you can create the VPC along with multiple uh, subnets also. It is either of them your wish guys. You, can, you guys can go for any one option. Are you clear so far? How to create yes. the VPC, how to create the subnet, public subnet and private subnet. Yes, finish. Okay. Others? Aman, Sam, Satyamurti, Yuva? Yes, finish. Okay.
this i will give you one okay i want you guys should explore one thing guys so i'm going to give one simple task please try to solve this one the same actually first what you can do you have to create a vpc how to create a vpc using vpc wizard go with vpc wizard using that create a vpc and then try to you have to you have to make a note of all all the components all the components that vpc wizard is created just to note all the component of the vpc wizard it is creating vpc it is creating subnet and it is also creating the routing table and all just to look on that particular screen and try to take the vpc id take the vpc id and maybe check the route table associated with that check the route table check the route table associated associated with the vpc with the vpc In the same way maybe you can also check the subnet guys take the vpc id you can check the subnet created for that vpc let me show what you guys can do like once you have created a vpc just to take the vpc id this is a vpc id copy this and you will go with the subnet and here you can press it and press enter when you press enter we have created the two subnet right one public subnet and one other is private subnet just to look into this one and also we have a routing table right here also you can paste that particular vpc and press enter can you see one route table got created this is called a main route table tomorrow i will talk about route table but as of now you just to see like this is a route table one vpc id got one route table it means that for a single vpc you got one route table even though you have created a two subnet you are seeing only one route table so just to look into this particular column route table id and it's a main route table and we have an vpc and the owner id like that so your assignment is today create one vpc using the vpc wizard and once you have created a vpc what are the different component it is creating just look into that one and use the vpc id to check a subnet and a route table are you clear so far yes finish dinesh please post it in the chat window sure that access sure sure Yeah, I posted. Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks. Okay. Guys, uh, let me share some URL. If you have time today, please try to read this documentation. How Amazon VPC works. so when you have a time just to read it guys whether you are understanding or not that's completely fine just uh, read this one so what is vpc they have given what is subnet basics and how the internet traffic privacy in amazon vpc ip addressing everything they have given in a simpler manner also so just to read it whether you are understanding or not that's that's a different anyway i'm going to cover in the session itself but if you read it you will get more clarity on this and along with that i will give you this is also i will share you in the chat box you just if you have a time you just read it and one more is how to decide the cidr range for a vpc so this is also okay yeah 
So we have one article actually here, which is RFC. Let me show this. RFC. Yes, this one. RFC 1918. So using this article only, they are giving this cider range. So better you will read this article also. Just to read it. How this? Only IP version 4. Don't need to worry about IP version 6. At least IP version 4 you just read it. Okay. Fine. Okay. One more. So this is also the URL I'm giving. You just do the answer also, guys. Try to create a VPC, try to create a subnet step by step. They have given how to create the VPC. So when you click on create a VPC, here they have given. So go to the VPC dashboard, create a VPC and give VPC and more and give some name and the CIDR block and select one availability zone. Everything they have given step by step. Just you can create one VPC and how to do the. This is a in default, you know, you are getting the private subnet. If you want to make the public subnet, again, they have given some clear picture. And how to understand the cider range, everything. And click on the next. And how to add some subnet. So this is how, you know, you can create the subnet also. So this and all, you know, you will give it will give you more clarity. So when you do the answer, click on this next. And routing table, no need to practice. Tomorrow, anyway, I'm going to cover routing table. Only VPC and subnet part, you guys complete today. So... The URL also I have shared. So do the answer also. Once you have done, take me the photo and send it to me in the WhatsApp group. So that way I will understand once you have done or not. Fine. Any question? Any question? Right. Nothing. Okay. Then. Thank you, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Please practice. Bye. Okay.